Okay, Jeremy Veldman, welcome to another episode of Telescope Tips. Once again, I'm here with Brian Hancock, my buddy, and we're going to talk quickly about some quick things that you can do if you want to get out quick and dirty, start observing, and actually pimp your scope out for sometimes either a late night observing session or an early morning observing session, kind of like what we've done lately. Right. So, Brian, what do we got here? So, um, I don't know if it's possible, but if you are as lazy as I am, um, after you work all day, you get home and, um, and the stars are out or the planets are out or you get up really early in the morning and you want to get a 10 or 15 minute session in before work, if you think about lugging a big heavy telescope out the door, well it's kind of daunting yeah. and, uh, and you know the very thought of picking up such a, a heavy piece of equipment in the morning or after work uh, may uh, leave you without observing them. So what I've done is I've added wheels to the base of this Dobsonian. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll show you how I get it in and out the door. I've got a ramp, uh, three quarter inch plywood, and, and it's usually a little bit easier than that, but roll it down, you just roll it down. Now, luckily, this uh, scope maintains collimation really well. So, actually, it's uh, maybe about every week I have to collimate it. Um, but uh, your scope may vary. That may be enough motion to uh, cause you to have to recollimate. So, that's uh, the first thing I do is I added wheels to the base so that I can wheel it in and out. Now, these wheels, these these are actually casters, and um, and you can lock them. So, once you find a place. Um, and you want to observe, you can um, you can lock them in place and then it'll stay. But uh, maybe if uh, the house or the truck is blocking your view and uh, you want to take it somewhere else, well, you can just unlock it and uh, roll it to the next spot. So I, I highly recommend, uh, no matter what kind of scope you have, if uh, you can figure out a way to get it uh, in, and out um, quicker, yeah. and uh, you'll observe more. You can wake up maybe an hour before the sun comes up, early morning before you go to work, the moon's right. out, some of the planets are out, you can be in and out in what, like 30 seconds? Oh yeah, 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 this is, uh, and this is basically one trip, I, I have everything that I need, I can just wheel it out the door, I've got the eyepiece, I've got the finder, and I've got the tail rad. Keep everything on here. Keep the I keep everything on, on here. here. Tell right on here. Right. Keep the eyepiece on there. Again, this is a 10 inch dob, right? This is a 12 inch. Well, this is a 12 inch. Okay. Yeah. So you guys have seen my 20 inch. We talked about that in a previous episode. Brian's got a 10 inch dob. And again, you know these Dobsonians are they're basically big light buckets. Yeah. So wait, it's 12 inches. You keep trying 12, to sell me short. No, no, yeah. no. 12 <laughs> inches. I'm sorry. This is yeah. a 12 inch Dobsonian. Yeah. So you can see this is still a really good telescope. And we've seen some incredible stuff through this through this scope. We've seen, right. you know, the banding structure on, on Jupiter, as well as the red spot, the, the moons, the rings of Saturn, including the Cassini division. You know, we really, this, Brian really kills it with this particular scope. So, you know, this is all you need, really, to, right. to, um, to do a lot of great observing. And uh, I'll just mention a couple of other things as far as um, pipping out your scope, just making observing a little bit easier. Uh, if you observe in a neighborhood like I do, uh, one problem you may have is ambient light. Now in the, in the winter, I take care of that with an observing hood, but this gets really hot in the summer. <laughs> and, um, and not only am I lazy, for some reason I'm lazy and I sweat a lot as if I'm working. So in the summer, this doesn't work. So if you will look um, at the April 2017 edition of Sky and Telescope, they um, have a, at the very end, they have a little article about how to make a death loft um, observing shade. That's a D-E-T-H-L-O-F-F, -F, named after the person who invented it. And so uh, basically what I did is uh, I went to Zaxby's, got a really good salad, uh, cut up the salad bowl and um, added some uh, black felt to the ends and I made myself an IP shape. And basically all you do is you put it in your focuser. And so 
So the cool thing about this is when you're observing, this will block any ambient light from the eyepiece. What's extra cool about it is a lot of times you'll find that uh, observing with one eye, it, it kind of puts some strain. It's, it, you know, after you do it for a couple of minutes, it's kind of uncomfortable. What I've found is that with the Deathloft mask, you can open the eye that you're not observing with, and uh, all you see is black, and uh, and so you don't get a double image, um, and you, you still just see what's in the eyepiece, and um, so you, you can open your eye for a little bit, let it have some rest, and close it. So I highly recommend making a death loft mask to uh, further pimp out your scope. And again, this protects your night vision, right? So that you don't have to squint all the time. And kind of wears out your your eye when you have one eye open all the time right so. and uh, if you want um, you can use this in conjunction with the the uh, death law of, uh, observing shade if you uh, put this over your non observing eye it will further blacken you know but blacken out the image and you'll only see what's in the eye piece. Yeah. and then you can leave this eye open under underneath the eye patch well there you go 12 inch Dobsonian, completely pimped out, including not only the Telrad and the viewfinder, but now the Deathloft mask. And this is something you can do yourself. You know, go to Zaxby's, get a salad, keep the salad bowl, right. and there you go. And this is uh, another great tip for how to protect your night vision and another way to just kind of get through a long observing night without making your life easier. Actually, I do have one confession though. I just realized this wasn't a Zaxby salad. This was a, a big chocolate cake from Kroger. Oh, okay. Big so, chocolate cake yeah. from Kroger. Even better yet. Right. Absolutely. Well, thanks a lot, Brian. Again, guys, I want to remind you that the Memphis Astronomical Society meets once a month, every Friday, first Friday, at Christian Brothers University at Sessi Hall, room 155. Our meetings start at 8 o'clock, and we also host two dark sky observing sessions when it's clear at a site in northwest Mississippi. If you'd like to learn more, visit our website, memphisastro.org. With Brian Hancock, I'm Jeremy Veldman. Another episode of Telescope Tips, and we'll see you guys on the next one. Clear skies, guys.